Thank you very much, Ms. Yaccarino. Now we're going to rounds of questions, seven minutes each for the members as well. Uh, I would like to make note of your testimony, Ms. Yaccarino. I believe you are the first social media company to publicly endorse the CSAM Act. It is our honor, Chairman. That is progress, my friends. Thank you for doing that. I'm still going to be asking some probing questions, but let me get down to the bottom line here. I'm going to focus on my legislation on CSAM. What it says is civil liability if you intentionally or knowingly host or store child sexual abuse materials or make child sex abuse materials available. Secondly, intentionally or knowingly promote or aid and abet a violation of child sexual exploitation laws. Is there anyone here who believes you should not be held civilly liable for that type of conduct? Mr. Citron? Um, good morning, Chair. Um, you know, we very much believe that this content is disgusting and that um, there are many things about the Stop CSAM bill that I think are very encouraging and we very much um, support adding more resources for the cyber tip line and, and modernizing that along with um, giving more resources to NECMEC. Um, and um, we're, I'd be very uh, uh, um, open to having conversations with you and your team to talk through the details of the bill some more. I sure would like to do that because if you intentionally or knowingly host or store CSAM, I think you ought to at least be civilly liable. I can't imagine anyone who would disagree with that. You, yeah, it's disgusting content. It certainly is. That's why we need you supporting this legislation. Mr. Spiegel, I want to tell you, I listened co closely to your testimony here, and it's never been a secret that Snapchat, Snapchat is used to send sexually explicit images. In 2013, early in your company's history, you admitted this in an interview. Do you remember that interview? Senator, I don't recall the specific interview. You said that when you were first trying to get people on the app, you would, quote, go up to the people and be like, hey, you should try this application. You can send disappearing photos. And they would say, oh, for sexting? Do you remember that interview? Senator, when we first created the application, it was actually called Pickaboo, and it, the idea was around disappearing images. We, the feedback we received from people using the app is that they were actually using it to communicate. So we changed the name of the application to Snapchat, and we found that people were using it to, to talk visually. As early as 2017, law enforcement identified Snapchat as the pedophile's go-to sexual exploitation tool. The case of a 12-year-old girl identified in court only as LW shows the danger. Over two and a half years, a predator sexually groomed her, sending her ex sexually explicit images and videos over Snapchat. The man admitted that he only used Snapchat with LW and not any other platforms because he, quote, knew the chats would go away. Did you or ev and everyone else at Snap really fail to see that the platform was the perfect tool for sexual predators? Senator, that behavior is disgusting and reprehensible. We provide in-app reporting tools so that people who are being harassed or who are, you know, have been shared inappropriate sexual content can report it. In the case of harassment or sexual content, we typically respond to those reports within 15 minutes so that we can provide help. When LW, the victim, sued in Snapchat, her case was dismissed under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. Do you have any doubt that had Snap faced the prospect of civil liability for facilitating sexual exploitation, the company would have implemented even better safeguards? Senator, we already work extensively to proactively detect this type of behavior. We make it very difficult for, for predators to find teens on Snapchat. There are no public friends lists, no public profile photos. Uh, when we recommend uh, friends for uh, teens, we make sure that they have several mutual friends in common before making that recommendation. We believe those safeguards are important to preventing predators from misusing our platform. Mr. Citron, according to Discord's website, it takes a, quote, proactive and automated approach to safety only on servers with more than 200 members. Smaller servers rely on s server owners and community moderators to define and enforce behavior. So how do you defend an approach to safety that relies on groups of fewer than 200 sexual predators to report themselves for things like grooming, 
trading a CSAM or sextortion? Um, Chair, our, our goal is to, is to get all of that content um, off of our platform and ideally prevent it um, from um, showing up in the first place or from people engaging in these kind of horrific activities. Um, we deploy a, a wide array of techniques that work across every surface on, our, um, on Discord. Um, I mentioned we recently um, launched something called Teen Safety Assist, which works everywhere and it's on by default for teen users. That kind of acts like a buddy that um, lets them know if they are in a situation or talking with someone that may be inappropriate so they can report that to, to us and block that user. Um, so we- Mr. Citron, if that were working, we wouldn't be here today. Senator, uh, Chair, there, this is an ongoing challenge for all of us. That, that, that is why we're here today. Um, but we, we do uh, have 15% of our company is focused on trust and safety, of which this is one of our top issues. That's more people than we have working on marketing and promoting the company. So we, we take these issues very seriously, but we know it's an, an ongoing challenge. And I look forward to working with you and collaborating with our, our tech peers and the nonprofits to, to improve our approach. I certainly hope so. Mr. Chu, your uh, organization and business is one of the more popular ones among children. Can you explain to us what you are doing particularly and whether you have seen any evidence of CSAM in your business? Yes, Senator. Um, we have a strong commitment to invest in trust and safety. And as I said in my opening statement, I intend to invest more than $2 billion in trust and safety this year alone. We have 40,000 safety professionals you know, working on this topic. We have built a specialized child safety team to help us identify specialized issues, horrific issues like uh, material like the ones you have mentioned. Uh, if we identify any on our platform and we proactively do do detection, we will remove it and we will report them to NICMEC and other authorities. Why is it TikTok allowing children to be exploited into performing commercialized sex acts? Uh, Senator, I respectfully disagree with that characterization. Our live streaming product is not for anyone below the age of 18. We have taken action to, to identify anyone who violates that and we remove them from, the, from using that service. At this point, I'm gonna to turn to my ranking member, Senator Graham. Uh, 